Hey besties, welcome back to my channel where we do all things printing. I'm Angeline and today we're in my home studio and I want to show you the holographic media that Roland carries in their online store. This holographic material is 6 mil, which I would say is generally thicker, but it makes for a really good rigid sticker. So when you peel it, it doesn't fall back onto itself. I'm also going to show you some recommendations on your design if you don't have white ink and you really want to still get that pop with holographic material. Let's get to it. Let's work on our design in Adobe Illustrator. I'll paste my artwork of this beta fish and size it down to fit on my artboard. So I'll go into properties and just scale it down. I want to show you the differences between something with a lighter color scheme, like these pastel colors, and then the same design but with bolder colors. Bolder colors will lay down more ink and that shows up well on holographic media because it darkens all the busyness of the shine. We'll make this a deeper, darker blue. Now, if you're not too familiar with Illustrator and colors, right over here where you see CMYK, this is telling you what percentage of ink is being used for that color. I want a real solid magenta, so I'm making the other color 0% and magenta at 100%. It also helps to alternate a dark, then a light, then a darker color. I want to add a little more variety into the color, so let's change this circle color into something else. Let's go with like a coral color. Once I have all my colors picked out, I'm ready to make the cut line. There's a few different ways to do this and I have other videos that go in depth which you can check out in the BN2 playlist on my channel. But in short, I'm using the stroke method to add a thickness to the border and I'm turning that into a cut line. I'll open up the Roland Versorx swatch to assign that the cut contour swatch color. We don't want this a solid fill so we'll swap that and make sure it's an outline and remove that blue solid fill. For the finishing touches, I like to zoom into my artwork to make sure that we don't have any sharp corners. This helps so that when you peel out your sticker, it doesn't catch in the corner and rip. I'll duplicate this cut line and just drag it over onto our other sticker since they're exactly the same shape. And let's make this match as well, but also giving it a pastel color so we can see the difference in printing. I've saved my file as a PDF, so let's get set up on the BN2. I have regular gloss vinyl loaded up, so let's do a quick change to holographic. Holographic vinyl from Roland currently comes in a 15 inch roll, so make sure you keep that in mind when preparing your design files. Alright, it's all swapped out, so let's take it to the machine. Pin side on the right, and it's easy to just pop it in. And give it a spin for good luck. We'll feed it through where the arrows point up. Make sure we get it underneath the metal clamps on the left and right. And again, since this vinyl is less wide than the standard, we have to move the left pinch roller along with the clamp. They move separately, so don't leave it behind. Now we'll press them back together, making sure the vinyl is underneath. Here's another tip, we'll roll this back nice and taut, and this helps so that you don't get buckling. Instead, your vinyl is nice and flat in there. Quick blade check. Let's pop this out real quick. This is how much I have my knife sticking out and it actually has some adhesive residue from other cut jobs. So let's give it a quick clean. I just do a quick wipe to rub it off. You can use alcohol if you want to. This isn't too bad, it'll do. As I put my blade against the vinyl, it looks like it needs to come out a bit longer. So I'll give that a twist to expose the tip more. But don't go overboard and a little bit will do. I check my knife against my vinyl to make sure that it's out slightly more than the thickness of the vinyl. We'll put that back in the holder. Because this vinyl is quite thick, let's do a cut test to make sure we can peel our stickers out okay. This one didn't cut through at all. It's like it just scratched the top surface. This is a thicker vinyl like I mentioned, so let's go increase the force. I have it at 150 now and let's weed out the circle. It looks pretty good. And the square as well to check if the cut went through the backing. All looks good, so let's move on to VersaWorks. 
I uploaded my files here. We're going with high quality for a two minute print with bi-direction. That means it will lay ink going both ways when it moves left and right. I'll fill out the row with some copies and to really maximize the space, we can crop or clip the artboard. By clicking get media width, it updates the size of the vinyl that we loaded into the machine. I want to fit the copies in one row, so I'll reduce the size just enough. Looks good, so let's get printing. And there it goes. While we're watching this print, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this on the BN220. From here, you could already see the differences between the two color variations, one of them being the lighter pastel color and then the one with more ink laid down which has more vibrancy and it gives it more pop. After printing, it automatically rolls up to start cutting. Our cut lines are very simple and smooth, so it isn't too long before that's finished. Using the sheet cut feature, let's chop this off and take it to the working table for a better look. We have a good amount of excess, so I'll save this scrap piece. Not sure if that's a good or bad habit. Now from one corner, I'm going to weed away the background, leaving just our finished beta stickers. And they're nicely cut because we made sure to do that cut test beforehand. See the difference between the colors? One pops more than the other, so again, keep that in mind when designing for holographic vinyl printing. I'll peel this off to show you that the thickness of this holographic material keeps it pretty rigid. It's not an overly floppy sticker. You can see the difference between this regular vinyl, which is 3mm, half the thickness of the holographic sticker. Now here's some bonus printing for you. I'm printing an assortment of other designs so you could get a good visual on what works and what doesn't. Maybe it'll inspire you for your next project. Some are solid colors and others have a watercolor effect. To my surprise, the watercolor doesn't even look bad at all. It's pretty cool actually and it has some fade to it. They all shine kind of differently depending on the lighting and angles that you look at it. Besties, that's it for this holographic vinyl sticker video. In the comments below, let me know if you found this video helpful or if you want to see something else. I'm always happy to try things out and take you along for the ride. If you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.